In a well-designed database, you'll create many tables that relate back to records and other tables. If you have data that isn't specifically about the primary theme of the table, it's probably the case that it should go into another table. For instance, let's suppose we want to store credit card information in our database. Here's a couple of questions that you might ask when determining where to store the credit card data. Does the credit card number describe our customer? No, not really. Will every customer want us to remember their credit card number? Probably not. Will some customers have multiple credit cards on file with us? Yeah, that's a possibility. So credit card numbers are not specifically about a customer. Some customers won't have any, and some customers will have many. All of these answers lead me to conclude that customer credit card numbers should be stored in a different table from our customers. Let's create a new table to store credit card information and then create the hooks to be able to tie it back to specific customers. From the Create tab, I'm going to go and press the Table button. I'm going to add the fields for card name, card type, card number, all of those being short text, and then we'll add a field for expiration date, which will be a date time field. This first one, I'll double click on ID and change it to credit card ID. I'll press tab to go to the next field and press the T key to select short text from the list. This is our card name field. I'll press tab again and press T again for another short text field. This one is our card type. Tab again and T again. This is our card number. Tab again. This time I'm going to choose the expiration date. That's a date time field. I can go down with the arrow keys or just press the D key to select a date time field. And this is expiration date. We'll also need to create a way to tell us what customer this credit card belongs to. We could put a name field, but what would happen if we have two customers with the same name? How would we know which of them this credit card belongs to? This is why we have a unique primary key in each table. We can make use of them in other tables so that we'll know exactly which customer each credit card belongs to. This is called a foreign key in the credit cards table since it tells us who each credit card belongs to. Create an additional field named customer ID. And I'll press the tab key here. And this is going to be a number field. So press the N key and type in customer ID. We can rearrange the position of our columns by clicking on the name. I'm going to press enter to finish that and then click on that field to highlight it. Now I can drag it to whatever position I want. Typically, a foreign keys might appear towards the beginning of our table, but it's not required. But I can click and drag to the left to reposition this field. I'm going to place it right after the credit card ID field. Also, while we're here, we can realign the widths of our columns. Simply double click on the edge between two fields to adjust the width of the column on the left. I'll double click here so that credit card ID fills out. And double click here for customer number and expiration date to make those fields wider. I'm going to go ahead and save this table now by pressing the save icon or pressing control S on the keyboard. And we're going to call this customer credit cards. Once you get that typed in, press OK. And you'll see it show up on the navigation pane on the left. Now let's start filling in some information to see how the foreign key fields work. Back in the customers table that we filled in in the last movie, we put in three customers, Evan, Micah, and Dante. Evan is customer ID number one, Micah is two, and Dante is three. Let's create some credit cards here in our customer credit cards table. I'll click back on the tab to switch back to the other table. Now let's say Evan and Micah, that's our customers one and two, don't have any credit cards that they want to save with us. Dante, he's our customer number three, and he has two credit cards. We'll fill in the credit card table like this. The first credit card will have a record ID on its own. This again is an auto number field that Access will take care of for us. The customer ID, this is who this credit card belongs to. This credit card belongs to Dante. He's our customer ID number three. I'll press tab to go to the card name. This is a business card. So I'll type the word business here. The card type is a visa, and I just notice I have a typo here. So I'll double click on card tile and rename that to card type and press enter. All right, so that's a visa card. I'm going to go ahead and type in the card number here. 4826-0526. 85820623. And I'll press tab to go to the next field, the expiration date. And I can type in the expiration date or I can use the calendar picker. Since this is a few months out, I'm just going to go ahead and type it 10 31 2013. And press enter to accept those changes. I'm going to double click on this line between card number and expiration date one more time 
to expand the width of that column to accommodate the entire credit card number. Now we're going to type in another credit card for Dante. Customer ID? Well, that's the same. It's still customer ID number three. This time, this is a personal debit card. It's still a Visa card, and it's got a number here, and the expiration date for this card is 33114. So notice that this structure is very flexible and efficient in allowing us to create one, many, or no records that are related to each customer. And the order that the cards are entered doesn't matter. If Evan, he's our customer ID number one, decides later to put in a card, that's completely fine. It can go anywhere in the table as long as it is tied to his customer ID. So let's put one in for Evan. Customer ID for Evan is one. This is his airline rewards card. It's a MasterCard. The number here is 5275-6787-1289-1613. And the expiration date is 22815. Adding foreign keys to your tables is just like adding any other field. The important point to keep in mind is that the data types must match. This means that if you're using an auto number field as the primary key in one table, then the foreign key in the related table must be a number field. As long as the data is the same, you can use one as the reference to look up information in the other.